The Ostomy Nurse Project. Hello everybody, welcome. Thank you for tuning in to this latest episode. I'm Felicity, your Ostomy Nurse, and you are listening to the Ostomy Nurse Project. Today's episode is looking at a, a very unfortunately common problem that a lot of people with stomas experience uh, at least some point in their stoma life and that is looking at complications with the skin around the stoma. So for anybody who has selected this episode as the very first episode that they want to listen to, welcome. Thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And you might have selected this episode because you may or may not have a stoma. You might be a person who looks after somebody who has a stoma. And you may find that there's some skin complications or skin problems occurring either underneath the ostomy appliance or immediately around the stoma. And unfortunately, peristomal skin complications are a very common problem. And there's a lot of reasons for that to do with either the mechanics of applying a pouch, taking a pouch off, perhaps a pouch that doesn't necessarily fit properly anymore, and it causes moisture damage and leakage underneath. And there's also other skin problems that can occur when you're wearing an ostomia pouch, things like allergies, dermatitis, fungal reactions, those sorts of things. So we're going to talk about all of that today in this episode. Now, just an FYI for any stoma nurses who happen to tune into our episodes, We are maybe a couple of weeks out from the conference up in Sydney where I will be presenting the Ostomy Nurse Project. So if any of you listen to this podcast, please come and find me at the time. Let me know what you think. Give me some either positive or negative feedback. I welcome both. And tell me exactly what it is that you want to hear about and the stuff that you want me to talk about on this podcast because um, I enjoy getting feedback and it really helps me to tailor the episodes with content that you all want to hear about. And if you think that there's something that I haven't covered yet, I can let you know whether it's in the works or whether it's something that I need to add to the list. So uh, come find me in Sydney, guys, uh, from the week of the 20th of May. I'm going to be up there for the AASTN conference held in Sydney, and I'll be presenting it uh, up there to you all of you. So let's get started. What we call peristomal skin complications is really a fancy term for any irritation or sore areas or damage to the skin that sits underneath your ostomy pouch and immediately around your stoma. So it's not a big area that we're talking about, but it is the area immediately located around where your stoma meets your skin, so where red meets your skin color, and the surrounding area that sits underneath the adhesive part of your ostomy appliances. And so as much as we try to reduce these skin damages from occurring, peristomal skin complications have potentially been shown to affect anywhere between 60 to 80% of people who have a stoma at some point in their life, whether temporary or permanent. Now, as far as evidence-based studies go, ileostomies and in particular loop ileostomies and loop stomas are responsible for the, the biggest portion of peristomal complications. That's not to say that the others don't um, create complications in themselves, but it tends to be loop ileostomies where people suffer the most problems or the most frequent problems. And there's several reasons for that, but that's not to say that loop ileostomies are a negative thing. It just seems to be that it's a combination of how they are formed. So there's obviously a defunctioned lumen in there that can secrete mucus and allow effluent to get underneath a pouch and cause leakages and damages. But then you've also got an ileostomy and depending on whereabouts in the small bowel it is, the output or the effluent that comes out of an ileostomy in particular is always a bit more liquid and it has lots of corrosive enzymes in it. Um, And we're going to be talking about that a little bit later, but I just wanted to touch on the fact that it tends to be ileostomies that um, do tend to create the skin problems that people see to do with leakage. And also, these complications do usually occur within the first couple of weeks following the creation of a new stoma. But having said that, peristomal skin complications can present 
anywhere at any time uh, during a person's life with their stoma. So if even years down the track, peristomal skin complications can still occur. And again, there's lots of different reasons for that, whether it's change in size and shape of the abdomen, people gain weight, people lose weight. The stoma changes size and shape. Sometimes other complications occur to do with stomas like hernias and prolapses or retraction or issues with things like chemotherapy and radiation. All these factors, amongst many others, can contribute to changes in the stoma and the skin around the stoma for the life of the stoma itself. So for as long as the person has that stoma, skin complications can occur at any time. Okay, so let's get down to it. There's a lot of variables. There's a myriad of variables that can result in damage to the skin around your stoma. So in this episode today, we're going to be categorizing them and discussing them based on how these complications occur. So we're going to be talking about mechanical injury, infection, uh, chemical irritants, so that includes enzymes in, in the effluent, diseases of the skin, and skin allergens. And that's a good way to think about the different complications that can occur because we can discuss each one and the reasons that they occur and potential ways to prevent that or treat that if you do happen to notice that that is the problem that you may be having. Now, it's very difficult for me to explain in a podcast and be able to describe what a skin complication might look like because a lot of these complications might look the same. And as a person who's not necessarily trained in stomas, you as a person who has a stoma or you as a person who looks after somebody with a stoma may not know how to distinguish the difference between each of these signs. And so it's always important, and I reiterate this in most, if not all, of my podcasts episodes. If you feel that there is a problem with the skin and you are not sure what is causing it nor how to fix it, please get in touch with a stomal therapy nurse who will be able to diagnose the condition and recommend the appropriate treatment for you to fix that problem that might be occurring. All right, first up, mechanical trauma. There are a couple of main reasons that somebody with an ostomy appliance might sustain mechanical style trauma to the skin around their stoma. One of those is pressure. The other is friction and shear. When we're talking about pressure, sometimes you can develop a pressure injury to the skin around your stoma. You may notice a pressure injury if you have a very firm convexity Uh, to give your stoma a really deep push. Sometimes the rigidity and the firmness of the plastic ring that's used to push into the skin can be very harsh on people, especially with very delicate skin around their stomas. And if left in place for too long, the pressure enforced on the skin from that rigid ring can cause a pressure injury. Also, other causes of pressure injury can be things like pouches that have plastic belt loops. For anybody who wears an ostomy belt, not a support garment, but an ostomy belt that clips into uh, an ostomy appliance, those plastic loops, if you are pulling a belt taut to your skin with the idea of securing the pouch better, the pressure exerted on the skin from the tightness of that belt and the corners of the plastic clips and the belt loops can actually cause a pressure injury over the flange of the pouch. All of those hard plastic elements and those accessories attached to that bag, if applying enough force to the skin around the stoma, can cause pressure injury. Now, it's difficult to explain to you where you might see a pressure injury around your stoma, but if you suspect that you have a pressure injury, it may look like either a partial to full thickness loss of skin. It may be painful around the edges. It may be irregular. But when I say irregular, you might find that this wound or this area of redness develops around a place where you might have a rigid plastic element to your ostomy appliance. So if you happen to notice that you develop a bit of a red sore spot in the corner of a belt that you use, so underneath where a sharp plastic corner clip of your belt sits, you may notice that there's a bit of redness. That may indicate that there's a pressure injury developing there. You might notice it underneath uh, on a particular side where you happen to sleep. 
If you sleep on a preferred side, you might notice that a small red area develops from laying on a rigid appliance on that side. You may notice that there's a developing ring of redness and that then further breaks down and becomes a weepy type wound that may indicate a pressure injury. And the next question is, how do we manage a pressure injury? It's important to identify what the actual issue is that's causing that pressure injury. So if you have access to a stoma nurse, get them to have a look at things like, first of all, the type and brand of pouch that you use. In this day and age, we have all levels of convexity. So it used to just be you either had a flat pouch or a convex pouch and the the depth and the rigidity was all uniform. Nowadays, we live in a world where we have soft convexity. We have profiled, shapeful convexity. So we've got different depths, different strengths. And so it may be a case where if you are developing a pressure injury, your stoma nurse may be able to recommend either a slightly less rigid convexity, uh, a slightly shallower convexity that may relieve some of the pressure that's causing that damage or that breakdown of the skin. If your pressure injury is caused by an accessory product, say a belt, they may be able to suggest slightly different techniques or applying a layered tape underneath or a cushioning type product that may be able to alleviate some of that pressure. We would also look at how tight you are tightening your belt. An ostomy belt is not supposed to be tight. You're you're meant to be able to fit three fingers comfortably underneath the strap of an ostomy belt. Otherwise, with too much tension, you will pull yourself too much pressure around the skin underneath your ostomy appliance and you will cause a pressure injury if you're not careful. So these are the things that we look at as stoma nurses if we suspect that you've developed a pressure injury as a result of your ostomy appliance. Let's talk granulomas. You may have heard the term granuloma floating around in the stomal therapy world, but granulomas are a hyperproliferative lesion that develops immediately around the stoma. So usually around the mucocutaneous junction, which is the part where your stoma meets your skin. And you might see little tiny red bumps around that site that start to grow. You can also see them on the stoma itself in some cases, but they are usually little red bumps that start to grow immediately around the stoma site. Now, they are a mechanical issue that sometimes develop as a sort of healing response to the area. When when tissue heals, it grows new tissue. And sometimes in the course of healing, it can grow cells exponentially bigger than what it should normally grow to. And this is where we start to see these little growths or little red lumps. It's a healing response. And sometimes when we're talking about mechanical trauma, if your pouch opening is right up against the stoma edge, as the stoma moves and creates peristalsis to to push output into the bag, the friction against the inside hole of that pouch can cause like a micro wound and so the stoma tissue has to try and heal itself and in the course of doing so can develop these granulomas as a response to repeated friction. It's not always to do with the stoma pouching systems. Sometimes you get what we call suture granulation. So when your stoma is new and they have stitched it to the outside of your skin, That then creates tension and again, as the stoma moves, it will pull on those suture sites and sometimes in some cases, it's the same healing response, but around where the sutures have been. So again, where the stoma meets the skin, the tension and the friction and the movement creates that healing response that can go on to develop too much granulation tissue and turns into these granulomas. Now, sometimes that's not the case, and sometimes we don't know why somebody would develop granulomas, but they are a hyperproliferative condition that can occur because of friction against the bag or friction against the skin or friction against the stoma itself. Now, unfortunately, if you do have granulomas or if granulomas do develop over time, they can make pouching difficult. They can also be painful and they can also bleed quite significantly, especially when removing your pouches and cleaning the skin around the stoma. And that makes it very difficult to apply your pouches and get good adhesion. So they often need to be treated sooner rather than later, 
otherwise they can cause problems with adhesion of your ostomy pouch. Now treatment involves uh, contacting either a specialist or a stomal therapy nurse depending on the reason for these granulomas or how big they are they may need to be removed surgically so through cauterization under a procedure or if they're small sometimes a surgeon or a stomal therapy nurse may choose to remove them with the use of silver nitrate so chemically cauterizing them so that they reduce and come off. Now, the other common mechanical trauma that can result in a wound underneath your ostomy appliance is friction and shear. Now, the most common causes of friction and shearing injuries are a poorly fitted bag, uh, too rough when you're cleaning, ripping the appliance off, so stripping it like a Band-Aid, or too frequent changes of your ostomy appliance. So when we talk about things like abrasive cleaning you may be scrubbing the skin a bit too hard you may be using harsh soaps to clean your skin underneath your ostomy appliances and that can cause dryness it strips the moisture from your skin and if your skin gets too dry it can get flaky so the next time that you go to remove your appliance you may be removing layers of dry skin and if you do that often enough you will develop a sore because you are ripping off or creating like a micro wound around that area also in this day and age as i said we we live in a world where ostomy appliances have had an awful lot of technology put into their adhesives. Now, whilst we use hydrocolloids, which are designed to be very kind to the skin to be able to remove the appliances, a lot of the products these days get very, very sticky. And it's because the ostomy appliance has what we call a tackifier in it, which is a chemical or a product that's designed to make the bag really sticky. Now, some products also have very flexible edges. Some products have adhesive tape borders and they're all designed to create adhesion with the skin which is great because you can feel secure in a product however if you are not careful when you are removing that appliance when you strip that off the skin it's like ripping off a band-aid you can cause damage to the skin underneath if you are simply ripping off your appliances particularly without the use of any accessory products to help you take off the bag. And if you are doing that frequently enough, just peeling your bag off without being gentle or without assisting the removal of that bag in any way, you can cause mechanical friction and shear type injuries to the very delicate skin underneath the bag. Now, what does this look like? Again, you may see like what looks like a graze. You may see... Uh, irregular borders to it so it might not be uniform it might look like a cut or a scrape you may see loss of skin you may see redness every time you're taking off your pouch which continues to get worse until it turns into a superficial stripped abrasion if you will now in the medical field we call this a term MARSI or MARS M-A-R-S or M-A-R-S-I which is just an acronym for medical adhesive related skin injury but it is prevalent in anything, not just ostomy pouches. So for patients who have wound dressings or band-aids or occlusive films with delicate dry skin, in removing those, you can cause traumatic damage to the area. And as with a pressure injury, you might start to notice it in certain areas. So if you do use an appliance that has a flexible edge and you are pulling off your bag and you're noticing that you are getting perhaps a red ring around the very outside of the ostomy appliance, that may indicate to you that the problem is with the stripping of the edges. So if you had a red ring around the outside of your ostomy appliance, it might not indicate to you that there's a problem with leakage or, or anything like that. It might signify that there's a problem with the removal process. And again, it's very hard to describe through a podcast but if you are not sure whether that is causing your problem, again, ask an ostomy nurse to have a look at things like your changing technique. We will look at the pouching technique that a person uses. We will look for things like vigorous removal, the use of any accessory products, people who pick at the edges of their appliances to try and lift them up to remove them. These all can be 
inadvertent reasons why you might be causing yourself a little bit of injury when you're pulling off your bag. Now, the treatment for friction and shearing injuries can be quite simple. We may suggest uh, proper cleaning, uh, use of accessory products. If you don't already use an adhesive remover, but you're getting friction and shearing mechanical trauma to the skin, we might suggest the use of an adhesive remover to help take your pouch off gently and slowly. We look at your technique. We might suggest that you remove the pouch slower, more gently, peeling it downwards as opposed to peeling it outwards, which can put tension on the skin and can strip the skin. We will also ensure that you have a properly fitted bag that is easy for you to use. Now, if there is an existing wound that we need to treat, we can potentially treat that through either using a bit of stoma powder to the raw skin. Um, we may suggest using a barrier wipe to dissolve that powder, or we may suggest just dusting a bit of powder on that area to dry it up so that your pouch will adhere over the top. For deeper trauma, like pressure injuries that have turned into a proper wound, we can apply wound products underneath your ostomy appliance. So that's something like perhaps an alginate or a hydrofiber to soak up that weepiness before putting your ostomy appliance over the top so that that wound heals itself underneath your ostomy appliance and doesn't get too wet that you have troubles with adhesion. These are the wound care suggestions that we can make to heal those wounds underneath. But the important thing is always to address the issue that's causing it in the first place. Otherwise it will not get fixed and the problem will continue to worsen. And there's also some suggestion that the use of a barrier wipe or a spray can be beneficial for mechanical trauma through tearing off the bag and creating injuries. Sometimes if you are creating a silicone layer in between your skin and the ostomy appliance, there are reports that it makes it easier to remove because you're essentially removing that silicone layer when you're pulling off the ostomy appliance. So whether or not your stomal therapy nurse suggests the use of an adhesive remover to help your technique or the use of a barrier product for future removal, that's something that would be negotiated with you and your stomal therapy nurse. Okay, next we want to look at things like inflammatory skin conditions and infections. And when I say infections, I don't mean like the blood-borne infections that make you really, really sick. I talk about infections that can happen in the skin when certain chemicals and pathogens get out of control. And one of the most common skin infections that we see, particularly in post-operative stomas, so stomas that are newly formed, is yeast infections. You can refer to it as candidiasis because it's candida albicans, the fungi that uh, penetrates into the skin and causes a rash. The other type of skin condition is what we call folliculitis, but it is a slightly less common condition and can happen uh, in terms of people who have lots of hair growth and with repeated removal of their bags, the uh, sebaceous glands and the, the oily substances around the follicles of the hair can become infected and inflamed. And that usually requires a course of either topical or oral antibiotics, depending on the severity of the infection, to clear up those infected skin pores. But going back to yeast infections, yeast infections are common in new stomas for a couple of reasons. Typically, when they do a bowel operation and create a stoma, you will receive some sort of intraoperative antibiotics. And that's because any operation on the bowel creates a higher risk for developing an internal infection. Because when you open the bowel or the bladder or areas that are technically unclean, um, we can increase the risk of introducing bacteria into the gut. And so what happens is when they make stomas, they will usually give you some sort of either single dose of antibiotics or a post-operative course of antibiotics. And antibiotics kill off both good and bad bacteria. Now it's the good bacteria and the acid mantle on the skin that prevent the overgrowth of fungus. So when you've received antibiotics, some of that good bacteria is decreased. And what you may find is that in the post-operative course after having a stoma formed, you may develop what we call oral thrush, where you might have a funny taste in your mouth, you might have some a white furry coating on your tongue, and that's an indication that there's an increase or an overgrowth of candida in the oral tract. Now, 
make the connection. The oral tract is connected to the digestive tract. The digestive tract is connected to your stoma. I feel like I'm singing that skeletal song, the thigh bones connected to that. But when you think your oral mucosa is connected to your stoma, which comes out the other end. So it's reasonable to assume that if you've got a candida overgrowth or a yeast overgrowth inside your mouth, you may find that you get the same type of condition coming out around your stoma. Now, one of the things that fungus love is heat, moisture, and food. They love to grow in an acidic environment. They love a moist, warm area where they can proliferate and grow. And one of the key places that they will tend to grow is around your stoma. You have an acidic environment that is warm and constantly wet because it's secured underneath an ostomy appliance, which is maintaining moisture. What does a yeast infection look like? It's very hard to describe, but you may see a red, almost a purplish shiny rash immediately around your stoma. You may also see it getting bigger or in a typical place where the moisture sits. So it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, all around the stoma. But one of the ways that we like to tell if some, if we suspect that somebody has a bit of thrush around their stoma, we will firstly look inside the mouth. If there is a thrush overgrowth in the mouth, that is a fairly good indication that there may be an overgrowth of yeast around the stoma. Now, peristomal thrush can also be caused by things like increased perspiration. If you're very warm, if you've been sweating, so if you've had your stoma for a while and you're quite active, you can get thrush later on in your stoma life. It can also be caused by leaks, which is causing acidic effluent to sit onto the skin and that causes moisture. It can be denuded skin, so raw skin can create yeast because, again, the increase in moisture and prolonged wear time of your ostomy appliances. So if you're trapping moisture in that area, the longer you wear your pouches, the longer uh, it stays warm and moist and the more chance it has of developing a yeast infection. Now, symptoms and signs that there may be a yeast infection is either a circumferential or, or perhaps even a partial rash around the stoma, which might look like little red dots. There might be some areas of darker pigmentation there may even be some little papules or pustules, depending on how severe the yeast infection is. There may be some little scattered red areas, like little red dots as well. That may be an indication that there's yeast, but it could also mean lots of other things. You may have some burning or itching, and you may be finding that when you're taking off your ostomy appliances that you've got a lot of what we call maceration, which is simply another term for increased or excess moisture. So you might find that when you're taking your bags off, your hydrocolloid is especially wet or mushy because it's having to absorb increased amounts of moisture. That may be a sign that you've got some increased fungal areas that need to be treated. Speaking of treatment, what do we do if we suspect that you have a yeast infection around your stoma? So first of all, we have to identify the cause of that moisture, you know, whether it was the leaks, whether it was the climate, you know, if you're leaving your bags on too long, whether it's increased perspiration, these will help us to tailor your pouching technique to try and reduce it from occurring again. Other treatments can be either topical or systemic. When I say topical, uh, it can be in the form of an ointment or a powder. It's very difficult to put your, you know, if you get like caniston cream, we call it over here in Australia, uh, but antifungal creams are great for treating thrush in things like the groin and other moist areas. However, trying to apply a cream underneath an ostomy appliance is fraught with complications because your bag will not stick. So we try other things. There are topical treatments that are more of a liquid. Over here, it's available in chemists. I think it's called Resolve, and it's a liquid form of an antifungal treatment that will treat quite a lot of the yeast and be able to let your ostomy appliance stick. There's also powders. You can get Nystatin powder in some cases, but as a general rule, we will not use creams or ointments as they will interfere with adhesion of your ostomy appliance. If your yeast infection is very large and you've got yeast in other areas, so like I said, in your oral mucosa, in the groin, systemic treatment in the form of tablets or mouth drops with the help of a doctor may be more beneficial for you. And if your stoma nurse thought that you would benefit from systemic thrush treatment, 
they would recommend uh, a script from your physician or your doctor to treat that. Okay, so just going back to folliculitis that I mentioned before, the other type of skin infection, the causes of folliculitis are multivariate. There's lots of different reasons that you may get it, but some of the common causes for people that do get folliculitis is people who are particularly hairy, so men in general who have hairy tummies, shaving uh, the area underneath your pouches to get it to stick does actually strip skin cells from that layer, and that does leave them open to developing an infection because it's creating a wound, micro wounds, if you will. Ripping off your skin barriers, like I just mentioned before, with mechanical trauma. With repeated mechanical trauma, you are damaging all those very delicate follicles. And again, it leaves them predisposed to bacteria entering the area and causing a proliferation and an infection if not looked after carefully. Occlusion of the hair follicles is also another one. So leaving on your ostomy pouches can sometimes block those pores in some cases, not all of them. And that may be a reason why you develop follicle infections or folliculitis. What does folliculitis look like? You may see little red dots, pustules, uh, like little tiny blisters with bits of pus in them. It looks very similar to other conditions as well. So this is why we recommend that you see a stomal nurse for proper diagnosis. Or if the stomal nurse doesn't know what it is, they may even refer you on to a dermatologist or a doctor if they think it was something more significant. So folliculitis may be just general redness. It might be quite painful and it may be difficult for your pouches to stick. So in terms of managing folliculitis, we recommend that if you are going to shave the area, if you do have a hairy abdomen, use a trimmer, not a shaver. Um, you can trim hair down very finely without shaving it down below the skin level, and that can sometimes preserve the follicles and keep them healthy enough to prevent infections. We may also suggest using an adhesive remover to make pouch removal more gentle which means that you're not disturbing those delicate hair follicles and that may help to prevent further infections from developing. We also recommend the use of antimicrobial soaps to clean the affected area if you do have folliculitis. And we make sure that you wash it off and dry your skin thoroughly before applying your next pouch. Topical antibiotics can also sometimes be prescribed by a physician if we think that it requires more aggressive treatment. You can also get some antibacterial powders uh, depending on the country that you're in. And if that's something that you're interested in, you should get in contact with your stomal therapy nurse. For really severe infections, as I said, we would usually refer you on to a doctor who can swab the area and test it for a particular type of bacteria and may suggest a particular antibiotic to treat that. Now let's talk chemical irritants or inflammatory skin problems or peristomal skin problems that are as a result of chemical imbalances. And when I say chemical irritants, I don't necessarily mean just chemicals that you are applying on or around your skin or chemicals that may be present in your ostomy appliances. I'm also talking largely about the chemical imbalance in the output from your stoma that can come into contact with the skin and severely denude and degrade the delicate skin immediately around your ostomy site. And we call this peristomal contact dermatitis or just dermatitis or contact dermatitis, whatever you want to call it. But the causes of the dermatitis are an inflammatory reaction, which is caused by being exposed to the chemicals in your output. It can also be because of exposure to soap, solvents, or adhesives. So uh, secondarily, the chemicals in the ostomy appliances or the accessories that you may use that you may be having a reaction to when you're applying those products. Now, if we're talking about skin damage that's caused by your output, some of the causes can be when your ostomy appliance hole that goes around your stoma may be cut too large and too much skin is exposed, which means there's too much of your normal healthy skin that's coming into contact with either urine or feces. Your skin barrier may also not be correctly placed. You might not be aligning it correctly, which is exposing some of the skin and allowing it to be injured by the chemicals. Additionally, sometimes if you're wearing your ostomy appliances for too long, the hydrocolloid only absorbs as much moisture as it can and then the output will start to leak onto the good skin and cause further damage. 
what does this type of skin injury look like? You may notice that there are very specifically defined areas of skin damage. So you might notice a bright red ring of skin damage all around your stoma. You may find that it might be directly next to a dip or a crease uh, around your stoma. If you're a person who doesn't have a completely flat stoma site, if you've got some redness or irritation on a particular area just beside the stoma, that may be an indication that there is effluent or output coming into contact with your skin and causing that damage. The area might look really wet. It might be weeping. It might be red. And there may be even some evidence of a loss of skin. So layers of skin are coming off, creating a wound, a red, weepy wound. Now, when I talk to patients who have experienced these types of skin conditions, they often say that it starts out like a like a hot itchy type feeling, uh, almost bubbly feeling, and that then progresses to a stinging, almost a sunburn-like pain, especially when they take off their pouches and clean the skin, the area is quite painful for them. And that's because the top surface layer of skin is being uh, chemically broken down. Now, in terms of bowel stomas, why does the skin get broken down and injured in this way? Think about your effluent. The process of digestion involves secreting chemicals and enzymes that are strong enough to dissolve proteins. And so you eat a piece of meat, for instance, that's nearly all protein. Your stomach acids and your digestive enzymes are capable of breaking such big structures down into a liquid. So you imagine if these corrosive type enzymes are left on your skin, which is a very delicate and fine layer of cells, the chemical reaction in those enzymes will start to digest the structures and the proteins in your skin. And this is why this is the entire premise around finding ostomia pouches that fit correctly and protect the skin around your stoma so that the chemical irritants and the digestive enzymes in your effluent do not degrade the skin around your stoma. Now, how do we manage this problem? We often, as stoma nurses, find that this is the biggest problem that we tend to manage. And although this is a problem that happens a fair bit after stomas are newly formed, this problem with leakage and irritation can happen at any stage in a person's stoma life. So one of the first things that we look for if we notice that a person has all of a sudden developed sore skin, we look for leaks. So when we take off your pouch, we want to have a look at the opening around it and see where the fluid is getting underneath. Sometimes it's not that obvious, but if we do happen to see that there is a direction or a line or excess moisture in the hydrocolloid that comes off your skin, that may indicate to us that you are getting some sort of leakage onto your healthy skin and that is causing damage. We would also check then to see whether we need to modify either the pouch or the sizing of the hole that's being cut or if you get pre-cuts, whether we need to adjust that size. And then in some cases, we may even need to look at if the problem is continuing, we may need to look at something like introducing convexity or seals or something to bulk up that area and to protect the, the skin around the stoma a lot better than it had been. Treatment uh, of skin damage that's existing once it's there can involve things like we need to clean it gently with some warm water. We avoid all uses of soaps because soaps can either sting or they can dry out the skin, which can interfere with adhesion. We can also use things like stoma powders, pastes, seals, uh, and those sorts of products that will help to absorb the moisture from the weepy skin and protect the skin that's trying to heal around that area whilst effluent is still coming out because we can't simply stop the output from happening. But the general idea of treating this contact dermatitis is to treat the cause. So fix any leaks that are happening and prevent as much effluent from coming onto the skin as we possibly can. That is the entire basis of selecting an appropriate ostomy pouch for somebody to get good secure adhesion and to protect the skin from leaks and skin damage. 
Now, another chemical condition that we can sometimes see, and we sometimes see it with uh, those with urinary stomas, is what we call hyperplasia. Now, the causes of hyperplasia is where we have long-term exposure to urine or moisture. And we sometimes see it more in urostomies because people with urine coming out of their stoma, there's not as higher levels of corrosive enzymes. And so sometimes people think that they can cut their bags a little bit bigger because they, it doesn't matter as much that there's no poo going onto the skin, but that it's only urine. And unfortunately, what happens is over a long period of time, the chronic exposure to the chemicals in urine and the wetness and moisture of urine creates what we call like a hyper proliferative response and you end up with what we call like they almost look like little wart like papules or, or even nodules around the stoma that continue to grow and can make pouching quite difficult but you can get hyperplasia in some bowel stomas as well people who suffer from high output or very liquid output sometimes even in severe cases with people who have high output who have a very flush or even a retracted stoma, the long-term exposure of pooling of effluent, whether urine or feces, can cause this hyperproliferative response in the form of hyperplasia. So hyperplasia, as I said, may look like little papules or nodules. They may be whitish or grey coloured. They might even be slightly off colour, pinkish or brownish colour. They vary in their colour. They are generally found at what we call the mucocutaneous junction or the MCJ, which is, if you've heard previous episodes, is where your stoma meets your skin. So where red meets your normal skin color. We generally see hyperplasia around those areas. It may be completely all the way around the stoma. It may be scattered in different areas. They may bleed. They may be very delicate and may bleed when you are cleaning the area around your stoma. For people with a urinary stoma, they may even start to look a bit like um, crusts or little crystals immediately around the stoma site. So that's what hyperplasia tends to look like. How do we manage hyperplasia? First of all, as I said, we will make sure as stoma nurses that you have a proper fitted appliance to cover up as many lesions as possible. Um, so to do that, we might choose to use a seal or again, paste without being too small, we can do that to cover that area and protect them from continued exposure to the output. Uh, for people with urinary stomas, we may try and encourage them to maintain a different pH. So making sure that you've got adequate fluid intake. You can sometimes introduce vitamin C into your diet and this helps to maintain the pH so that the urine output is not too acidic when it comes into contact with your skin. We can also use a pouching system that's going to help prevent urine from pooling around the stoma and creating that, that type of hyperplastic site. So a lot of the urostomy pouches these days have what we call an anti-reflux valve. And these anti-reflux valves mean that as the urine comes out and drops to the bottom of the pouch, there's a plastic uh, set of flaps that prevent urine from backflowing up to the top of your stoma so that, for instance, if you're lying down, you're not going to get a pool of urine sitting around that stoma site. It's going to stay in the bottom of the bag. And that can also help prevent uh, residual urine from pooling around that area and can stop you from developing hyperplasia. Now, treatment of existing hyperplasia. So if you've got these nodules that need treating, sometimes we can do it through soaking with vinegar in some cases. Other cases, we can often treat them with a little bit of what we call silver nitrate. Uh, that can either be done by a doctor or a stomal therapy nurse to uh, basically chemically cauterize those nodules so that they reduce and are removed. So if you're a person with a stoma who's developed these little nodules and you're concerned about them, it's best to book in with a stoma therapy nurse or a specialist who can diagnose the condition and see about the best way to treat that problem. Now, the other inflammatory skin condition that we do see in some cases is what we call allergic contact dermatitis, not contact dermatitis uh, that I just spoke about earlier, but 
allergic dermatitis. And allergies to products these days are not common. A lot of the ingredients in the ostomy appliances that we see are so natural that we don't often see allergic reactions. However, they can still occur and it may be to do with either the ingredients in the pouch, it may be to do with some accessory products that you might be using. Some people have allergies to adhesive removers and barrier wipes. So it's important to figure out exactly what it is that's causing the issue and we can eliminate that from your regime. Allergic dermatitis can also occur as a latent complication. So that can mean that you might have been wearing the same ostomy appliance for several years and nothing's ever happened. And then spontaneously, you can start to develop a, an allergic reaction to that. It does happen. So it can happen from the very onset of the pouches that you wear. So if you have a new stoma, you may have a reaction to some of the products, but you may also have a reaction way down the line if you've had your stoma for a significant period of time. The characteristics of allergic contact dermatitis can be very tricky to diagnose, but one of the things you will probably notice if you are suspecting that you have an allergy to a product is that you will see a mirrored image of the product that is being irritated on your skin. So for instance, if you wear a round wafer on your skin, you may notice a perfectly round, reddened, inflamed area directly underneath that product. So the same thing, if you wear a square product and you happen to be allergic to a particular base plate, if that base plate happens to be square, you may notice a perfectly square shaped redness or irritation or inflammation directly underneath that product. That is one indication that you might be having an allergic reaction to a particular product that you're using. Some people who wear extendable tapes in a particular shape, you may find that if you use border extenders, that your skin is very healthy underneath your wafer, but you might find that you have an outer irritation where the tape has been. Now, if you're not sure if you're having an allergic reaction to a particular product, or we're not sure which product it is that is causing you the issue, we may choose to do what we call a patch test. And it's very similar to other skin tests where we're testing for allergies. We would take a section of the current product that you use, and we would stick it on another part of your body. So we might stick a random base plate on the opposite side of your abdomen to see if it's the base plate that's causing the issue. If you do have a reaction on the opposite side, we could then assume that it was that product that's causing the problem. So, and, and with all other products, we can do that. We can take a section of other products, apply it to a different area of your skin, and if it turns out that you do have a reaction to that, we can pretty much assume that that is the pinpointed product that's causing the allergic reaction. Now, unfortunately, the main treatment for allergic contact dermatitis is to remove or eliminate that product that's causing the problem. Now, for some people that can be quite distressing because they may have been using that product comfortably for a long time and they may not want to change that style of pouch. So in some cases, we may choose to refer you on to a dermatologist who can suggest perhaps some very mild steroid creams or something that may reduce that irritation. But unfortunately, with long-term exposure or repeat exposure to that product, it's entirely likely that you will go on to develop further allergic reactions to it. And so it's important to get in touch with your stoma nurse because we may need to switch you to a product that you won't react to. But we would negotiate that with you and find the best product that you could manage or as close to that product that you would find easy to manipulate, but that you won't get an allergic reaction to. Okay, so that pretty much sums up most of the common skin conditions that happen for people with stomas. There are other skin conditions that do occur, but they're often rare, and I'm not gonna be talking about them in this podcast. If you are a person with a stoma or you're a person who cares for someone with a stoma, and you are noticing that there is damage to the skin around the stoma, and it is of concern to you, please get in touch with a stomal therapy nurse who can help you fix the problem. It is not normal to have skin problems. Unfortunately, although they are common, people tend to think that it is normal to just have skin irritations. And that's not the case. 
There are ways and means of treating these skin problems that do occur. And a lot of it is largely very easy and practical solutions to do with your appliances or even a treatment with a stoma therapy nurse. But the important thing is that if you are having problems with your stoma or your skin around your stoma, please get in touch with somebody because it's often easier to treat earlier rather than later. Okay, my ostomy friends, thank you for listening today. We've pretty much summed up the main skin complications that occur for people with a stoma. So that's things like your mechanical trauma, skin infections and conditions like fungal infections and folliculitis, noxious chemicals, so chemical damage from the effluent, so urine and feces coming into contact with your good skin and causing wounded tissue, skin sensitivities and allergic reactions to your ostomy products or your accessory products that you may use. We've covered all of that today and I hope I've touched on it fairly well. If you guys like the content that you've been listening to, please feel free to rate us on iTunes. You can rate us on Spotify if that's your medium to listen to. You can also leave a comment if you listen to these podcasts through YouTube. And I thank you guys very much. There will be maybe one or two more podcasts before we head up to Sydney for the conference, so look out for those. And in the meantime, thank you for listening to the Ostomy Nurse Project. For those of you tuning in for the first time, I am Felicity, your Ostomy Nurse, and we are coming to you from down under, right where your perfectly healthy stoma is. Bye!